Good morning, and welcome to our St. Peter Claver All School Mass on this final day in Catholic School Week. Today is Friday of the fourth week in Ordinary Time. In our readings today, we are reminded that a true treasure is in heaven with God. We are tempted to worry about things on earth or focus only on getting pleasure in this life. We may forget that eternal life with God is our true goal and is worth much more than anything on earth. At this Mass, let us ask for the grace to keep our eyes on Christ and our true treasure in heaven. We will have lasting peace knowing that this treasure will always be ours if we only say yes to him. Please stand as we begin our celebration of the Mass. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. You might notice uh, this candle, which is usually over there, and an Advent, it's back there. And this is called the Paschal candle, or the Easter candle. And you see it, well, we use it primarily at two occasions. When someone is being baptized, usually as a little bambino, or bambina. And the other time, we take out the Paschal candle is when we celebrate the life of someone at a funeral mass or a funeral liturgy. And so we will be doing that uh, in a few hours uh, for a uh, family from St. Anthony's. And so we ask that you hold that family uh, in your prayers. Uh, that also means that um, in the narthex, there might be a casket in just a few minutes. And so if you see it, just relax. This is part of the cycle of life. And that's what we do as the body of Christ, is that we honor all those chapters of life. We celebrate a life when it's born. And when that life continues, we celebrate your first Eucharist and then your confirmation. And then there's the sacraments of vocation. And so the church is there at all the stages, all along the way. And the gospel reminds us that in the midst of those chapters, what truly is valuable, what is truly worthy, it's not what we accrue, but who we meet along the way. And so if by our own choices, maybe we have been hurtful or selfish, we remind ourselves that our God is a God of love. And by being a God of love, he is also a God of second chances. Lord Jesus, you came to take away hatred and sin. Lord, have mercy. Through your cross, you gave us a new beginning. Christ, have mercy. And you are always with your people until the end of time. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us all to everlasting life. And my sisters and brothers, let us pray. Lord our God, grant that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Please have a seat. And sorry about the lights, it's a work in progress. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the uh, Colossians. Brother, Brothers and sisters, you have been raised to life with Christ. Now set your heart on what is in heaven, where Christ rules at God's right side. Think about what is up there, not about what is here on earth. The world of the Lord. Thanks be to God. response is happy are they who follow the law of the Lord happy are they who follow the law of the Lord our Lord 
You bless everyone who lives right and obeys your law. You bless all of those who follow your command from, be, from deep in their hearts. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. Obey your instructions brings, us much, brings as much happiness as being rich. I will study your um, teachings and follow your footsteps. Happy are they who follow the law of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Reading Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not, sorry, don't store up treasures on earth. Moths and rust can destroy them, and thieves can break in and steal them. Instead, store up your treasures in heaven, where moths and rust cannot destroy them and thieves cannot break in and steal them. Your heart will always be where your treasure is. The Gospel of the Lord. Have a seat. So, we like getting presents, right? When Christmas rolls around, that's, you know, that's, that's good stuff. You get a haul, right? And when your birthday rolls around, that means you, know, you might be getting something decent out of that if you play your cards right. Now, there are other occasions. I mentioned First Communion and Confirmation. So there are religious occasions where you might get some presents. But in the gift-giving game, I have uh, mixed feelings about gift cards. Now, on one level, they do make things much easier. But on the other level, because before, with a gift, you really weren't sure how much the person spent. And so the, the effort... And uh, it, but with a gift card, you know exactly how much they spent on you. And the question is, do you, you use that as a way of defining how much they like you or how much they love you? Because let's be honest, if it's your birthday and someone gives you a $10 gift card, well, that's nice. That's, no, that's thoughtful. That's considerate. But no one's going to call that $10 extravagant. Now, Someone gives you a $50 gift card. You know what? Let's just jack it up. Someone gives you a $100 gift card. Suddenly, your eyes are perked up just like yours. Yeah, I mean, you get that, that gift card is possibilities. You've got options that you didn't have before. And so, at first guess, who loves us more? The person who gave you the $10 gift card or the person who gave you the $100 gift card? Now, conventional wisdom and basic sense, well, basically, well, the $100 one. More is better. But is it? But is it always the case? There is a human drive, and this is part of our condition, is that as human beings, we have an awareness of scarcity. And this is built into us ever since we painted on cave walls. Is that we know there's not always enough food, not always enough water. And so when we live in scarcity, we tend to kind of hoard. Now, there's a word we hear every now and then. Dragons have a hoard. You've heard of hoarders. And the need to hold on to everything, at one point, might be a survival skill. But when it's unchecked and when that's the driving force of our lives, it might actually do more harm than good because if we're holding on to everything we've ever gotten, then we might not be able to embrace the future. We might not be able to grab and hold on to what's coming down the road. Now, I think a good example of someone who maybe has... a who this gospel might apply to, come on. Hey, Kevin, can you do a brother a solid? Thank you. All right, Scrooge McDuck. Now, you've all seen DuckTales, right? Okay. It's, it's a multi-generational thing. Um, 
So in its current uh, incarnation, the actor who does the voice of Scrooge is someone named David Tennant, who is a very talented Scottish person. Um, he also played Doctor Who. Now, the old, old, original, OG DuckTales, um, it was actually the guy from Mr. Ed, who was uh, Wilbur, but Mr. Ed was the voice of Scrooge for years. And we keep losing the signal. Anyways, don't worry about that. But, so Scrooge's favorite thing to do was to dive into the money vault, right? And swim through the money. Yeah, you can't do that. Physics will not work that way for you. Um, and for a lot of us, we think there's a sense of happiness because the idea of us swimming in a giant vault of gold means we have unlimited possibilities, unlimited potential. There's nothing that we can't do with all that money. But it's not guaranteed to make you happier. And the reason why I bring up Scrooge is that Scrooge never finds his actual true happiness in the money vault. He finds his actual true happiness in his relationship with Huey, Dewey, and Louie, with his nephews. And that's what, if I may, that's what Jesus is trying to get at. We find our treasure and our relationships, not our stuff. And stuff is important to a point, but stuff ultimately comes and goes. And life and faith means that we don't live in scarcity, but we live in trusting the abundance of our loving father, a father who sent his son to remind us what faith in motion, what faith in action looks like. It's not swimming through a money vault, but sometimes it's just giving someone who really needs it a reminder that they are loved. And each and every one of us can do that, even today. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis. May God bless him and guide him as he leads our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Archbishop Gregory, Assistant Bishop Joe and Ned, and all priests in our Archdiocese. May God bless them and guide them as they lead our church in Atlanta. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our governing officials. May we pass just laws which protect the poor and vulnerable, and may we build a loving society for all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for Christians throughout the world. May we stay focused on heaven and put nothing above Christ. And may we follow his command to share the gospel with the whole world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. On this last day of Catholic Schools Week, uh, we pray for all Catholic schools. May we look to Jesus, who is our true teacher and reason for existing. And may we bring his light to the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray to our St. Peter Claver family. May we be grateful for our special school. And may we be true to our mission to learn, lead, inspire, and serve like Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Almighty God, each and every day is an opportunity to be grateful for the grace and the love you have poured into our lives. Well, we will always have the temptations for the pretty things, but we are called to love that which endures. And the scriptures remind us that your love endures forever. So may we seek to desire and please you in all things so that we might find our truest and deepest happiness through Christ our Lord.
that we offer you. Earth is given, human hands have made, become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, become for us our spiritual drink. Lord, wash my iniquity and cleanse me from my sins. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may indeed be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, we bring to you, to your altar, these offerings of our service and love. Be pleased to receive them and transform us into the sacrament of our redemption through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, Father. And we are glad to give you thanks and praise because of your love for us. And because of that love, you gave us this great and beautiful world. And you sent Jesus, your Son, to bring us to you, to gather us around him as the children of one family. And for such a great love, we thank you with the angels and the saints as we join with them and their praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, blessed be Jesus, whom you sent to be friend of children and of the poor. He came to show us how we can love you, Father, by loving one another. He came to take away sin, which keeps us from being friends, and hatred, which makes us all unhappy. He promised to send the Holy Spirit to be with us always, so that we can live as your sons and daughters. God, our Father, we now ask you to send that same Holy Spirit to change these gifts of bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the night before he died, Jesus, your son, showed us how much he loved us, and you loved us. When he was at supper with his disciples, he took bread and gave you thanks and praise. Then he broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took the cup that was filled with wine. He thanked you and gave it to his friends and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which he poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until he comes again. And so, loving Father, we remember that Jesus died and rose again to save the world. He put himself into our hands to be the sacrifice that we offer you. Lord our God, listen to our prayer. Send the Holy Spirit to all of us who share in this meal. May this spirit bring us closer together in the family of the church with Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our bishop, and with all the other bishops and all who serve your people. Remember, Lord, our families and friends and all those who we do not love as we should. Remember those who have died. Bring them home to be with you forever. 
and gather us all together in the fullness of time into your kingdom. There we shall be happy forever with the Virgin Mary, the mother of God and our mother, and Saint Joseph, her husband. And there with all the friends of Jesus the Lord, we shall sing a song of joy. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. All right, let's try that one more time. Forever and ever. Amen. There you go. You've got to put your lungs in it. And longing for the completion of all things in the Father's love, we pray as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope from the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, behold the Lamb of God, behold the one who takes away the sins of the world the one who invites us to trust in the abundance of the Father's love. Blessed are they who are called to his service.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase through Christ our Lord. Amen. And who is taking home the vocations crucifix this week? All right. Oops, hold on. Just one second. Well, as the gospel reminds us, it's not about what we have, but it's who we meet along the way in this life. And a vocation is not a thing. It's a celebration of relationships rooted in the person of Jesus. So as you take this crucifix home, rem use it to remind yourself and your family of the Lord's love for us, but also that he's inviting us to help him build the kingdom in our midst and that uh, to call men and women uh, the body of Christ to help in doing that. So thank you very much. All right. For everyone else, have a wonderful weekend. Try to stay dry. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. This Mass is in to let us go in peace, to love, and to serve the Lord.